Hi everyone, Quick Thinny Shot Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Sampha album, La Hai. This is the long-awaited sophomore LP from UK R&B and soul singer, songwriter, and producer Sampha, an extremely talented guy, but also an extremely elusive guy, who is no stranger to building up anticipation. If you remember, his first big break in the music industry came by way of a bunch of appearances on the debut record of electronic music producer Subtract. His vocal performances on that LP were showstoppers. They were gorgeous. That was way back in 2011. Sampha did treat us to a little EP of material in 2013, but it would actually take years from there for us to get a full-length debut. That was in 2017. Obviously, he was in no rush to release this thing, and he didn't necessarily need to be, not only because he was continuing to land some impressive vocal features in the meantime, time, more with Subtract, uh, Solange, who was also on Kanye's Life of Pablo. But also, even though the current day speed and turnover of the music industry says otherwise, fans will actually wait for an artist when they're displaying a unique level of talent. It was not the most versatile album out there for sure, but the songs were finely crafted, the vocal performances were great. Overall, it was an album that was worth the wait. But if you thought that putting a record out would mean that the floodgates would break and we'd get like a follow-up sooner rather than later from Sampha, you, you guessed wrong. Because now this next record here, uh, we're getting six years after process. And honestly, it is an improvement on all fronts. Sampha is still scratching those emotional itches with his dynamic, beautiful voice, but also exploring different emotional modes too, vocally, be it the quick staccato leads he's hitting us with on the song Spirit 2.0. We also get some very eerie and mournful vocal leads that ride these tense, repetitive piano phrases on dancing circles. Sampha also increased the vocal versatility of this record too, with some other vocalists and group vocals, which certainly make the final moments of the intro track, more ear-grabbing, and also gives the first leg of Jonathan L. Siegel a kind of dramatic and theatrical spin. Which brings me to the lyrics on the record, as Sampa is getting more big picture and even conceptual with his writing. For example, when I originally heard Spirit 2.0 as a single, I thought that spare bar referencing Jonathan Livingston Siegel was interesting, but what I didn't see coming is that multiple sections of this record would essentially be taking inspiration directly and indirectly from that fable, because there's a lot of intentional parallels peppered throughout this record here with its themes of exploration, personal growth, existentialism, as well as growing into a greater awareness of things like time, love, change, spirituality, individuality, and fatherhood. I'd say there's certainly a question as to whether or not Sampa effectively ties all of these ideas up in a neat or conclusive fashion at the end of the project. Nevertheless, though, he does hit uh, some powerful and heartening peaks emotionally toward the finish, like with the song Evidence, which is clearly in tribute to his daughter, and this search for meaning in life or evidence of there being meaning in life. That's kind of a mission on much of this LP, but on this particular track, uh, he takes the existence of his child as evidence for that meaning. Plus, on the instrumental side, with all these rich, warm pianos, hand drums and group vocals. It's bringing kind of dreamy Stevie Wonder vibes. Meanwhile, What If You Hypnotize Me may not be my favorite tune on the project. The messaging is very much about this struggle of putting words to your feelings. Plus, this is one of many tracks on the record that makes use of flight as a theme in this specific context as a means of escaping persistent worries. The song also makes mention of therapy and uh, being hypnotized as a way to, I guess, kind of change your own thought processes. It's as if Sampha is trying to escape from the way that his mind works, and it's almost like the song is guilty of what it's trying to rebel against, especially with uh, the tune, I think, being sacrificed at the hand of just getting a lot of messaging across. Rose Tint as a closer, I think, is okay. It's a low-key epilogue-type moment. Musically, it doesn't have as much bite as other cuts here, but uh, it does come across as genuinely introspective. So yeah, again, the ending of this thing is okay. Thankfully, I'm thoroughly impressed with the rest of the record, though. Be that some of the songs I mentioned earlier, or plenty of others, with stellar songwriting and vocal performances. The Inspiring Spirit 2.0, the super catchy only, the tense and mesmerizing dancing circles. There's also Inclination Compass, which I think is the most tender ballad Sampha has put to tape so far. The word elegant isn't strong enough to describe the 
elegance of this track. There's also Suspended too. I love the way Sampha's vocal harmonies kind of cascade over one another on this track. It gives the song this rich, layered, kind of melty feel. Meanwhile, Can't Go Back explores the concept of the past and regrets. Just an obsession with going back despite pretty much having to move forward no matter what. This kind of ties into larger themes around the record with regards to time and uh, things being infinite. Are there beginnings and ends to the stuff that we experience in our lives? or is it just like one continuous thing bridging on to another thing? Beyond this, I would like to shout out the production on this LP because the vocals I've been going on and on about all sound fantastic. They're all well mixed and recorded. The pianos and keys throughout the record sound fantastic too. But I'd also like to say this record feels like the next logical step for Sampha because once again, he's bringing a pretty forward thinking and futuristic sound with a lot of subtle, creative, electronic touches, effects, and glitches. Maybe my favorite thing about some of these instrumentals is the beats, which at times can be very busy, very detailed, because there are numerous tracks with these very intricate breaks just firing away in the background, and they're groovy and dizzying, but simultaneously subtle enough to where they're not overtaking the track, throwing the songs off kilter. They really add a ton to these songs and fill a lot of appropriate space, and surprisingly are just not too much despite them uh, being so much more active and busy than the songs sitting on top of them. Overall, this LP I think is wonderful, it's unique, it's gorgeous, it's well-written, produced. Sampa did make us wait a while, he did, but I cannot fault him because he outdid himself, for sure. He gave us another record that was really well worth the wait, and if he takes six or seven more years to put out the next one, if it's quality again, that's totally fine. Feeling a light to decent nine on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up with the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, the Sampa, uh, forever.